Good morning, Starshines. My name is DH, my pronouns are they, them, and this is the Cozy Cast, episode four. Uh, today is Sunday, April the 7th, and it is hot in here. Uh, no knitwear today. Um, I am quite warm. We live in a condo building and um, management decides when to turn on the air conditioning and turn off the heating. Um, and when the heating's on, they tend to pump the rest of the building full of heating. So even though we don't have our heat on, it's very warm in here. Um, according to my little hydrometer, it is currently 82 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm warm. Um, and yes, the windows are all open. I have fans going, um, but <laughs> it's hot. Uh, so yeah, um, well, welcome, welcome back. Um, Thank you once again for all the incredible support over the last couple of weeks. Um, I love seeing new people join my little community. Um, love seeing all the comments on the videos. It's just been, it's been so much fun. Um, and I really hope to keep this going. Uh, there was no video last week. I gave myself a little bit of a break, um, but hopefully more videos coming up soon. And I will talk a little bit more about that later on. Um, but in the meantime, um, let's get right into things I guess. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is the shout out. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this last podcast talking about one of my favorite YouTube channels so we're gonna keep the love going. This week I would like to shout out Yarn and Yarns, uh, Rainbow Ange. Um, I love her channel and uh, I believe her pronouns are she her. Uh, I think that's accurate. If it's not, I, I apologize. Um, I love Ange. Uh, her channel is mostly knitting, a little bit of spinning, um, and then some just gorgeous footage of her walking around her local area in Wales. Um, she'll do, you know, polar bear dips in January and she's just, she's heckin' precious. She's heckin' precious. And um, her kind of vibe and style of videos has been a huge influence on my own and is one of the big influences on me starting this podcast of my own as well. So one thing that I love that she does is um, she gamifies her whips and like me she has many many works in progress going on. Um, she does a regular challenge where she casts on 12 new whips at the beginning of the year, like end of the year, beginning of the year, to kind of see her crafting through. Um, and then throughout the year, at the beginning of every month, she does her project planning by rolling a set of dice and uh, going with whatever prompts the dice give her. Uh, and as well, she gets her community involved by getting her community to decide what she's going to be working on for the month. So I think that's, that's great. Uh, and I'm hoping that one day my community will be big enough that I can do something like that myself. Um, but yeah, so the channel is Yarn and Yarns. Uh, it, Ange is her name. Go check her out. I'm going to leave her link below. Um, but definitely an awesome knitting and spinning and fiber craft uh, YouTuber and just really entertaining, sweet person to hang out with. Um, and like I said, heckin' precious. So let's get into the projects and I'm afraid that this section is going to be a little bit shorter than uh, it has been in previous weeks. Not that I've been project monogamous, I've been project loving polycule but not project harem, if that makes sense. Um, I've only been working on a couple of things. So let's start off with uh, finishes because I do have a finish. I'm very, very excited. Um, the video for this I'm hoping to get out next Wednesday um, doing a little project vlog type thing uh, so you're getting kind of a sneak peek at that but also a backwards peek at what I finished like two weeks ago anyways it's my emotional support void chicken um, and I know I know you guys have been seeing these all over the place the void chicken not the void chicken the emotional support chicken has gone completely viral for good reason these boys they're chonky they're soft like look look how large look how large good to hug the um the short row shaping on the front here just makes it really super squashable and it sits really nicely um i am torn 
I either want to make a thousand more of these um, or I never want to make one again. I haven't decided which. Um, oh, the pattern. It's the Emotional Support Chicken by The Knitting Tree Los Angeles. Uh, Annette Corsino, I believe, is the designer. Um, I did this out of this gray yarn is Lion Brand Heartland in the Great Smoky Mountains colorway. Um, this black is Loops and Threads Impeccable in black. The red for the comb is Loops and Threads Wool-like. I had to hold four strands of it together to get the right weight. Um, the beak is in Hobby Amigo held double. And the eyes are wooden buttons that I used a red Sharpie on. So, um, but yes, I either want to make a thousand more of these or never again. Um, and that's how I always feel about stuffed animals or anything like that. You know, those like little finishing details, like eye placement or properly stuffing the tail or just general shaping. Those little tiny details that can make something look either adorable or cursed. I'm not great at those details. Um, mine always end up looking cursed, which in the case of the void chicken is kind of okay um, because it's a void chicken. But I always get really frustrated at the final stretch of these projects because it just doesn't it just doesn't turn out the way that I want it to. But at the same time, this was such an enjoyable knit. It flew by. The, uh, the short row shaping is really ingenious and really easy to follow. Um, because you're doing it in garter stitch, you don't need to uh, pick up your wraps, which makes it just fly by. Um, and it's just, it's cute. I love it. I would love to see what the short rows would do to a self-striping or like an ombre yarn. Um, I was thinking maybe holding sock yarn double or even holding sock yarn single and making like tiny chickens. I don't know. Um, but more chickens may be happening. And it is a void chicken because, um, Stardew Valley, the 1.6 update just came out, um, and I started the void chicken. Void chickens are in the game. Um, you get them from void eggs, which happen when a witch flies over your farm and curses one of your chickens. Or you can buy it from Krobus, who lives in the sewers. Pro tip. Krobus's favorite food is void mayo, which is made from void eggs, which you get from void chickens. FYI. Uh, so yes, yeah, so this is my only finish for the last couple of weeks. Uh, this is the emotional support void chicken. So what have I? What else have I been working on? Um, let's move on to my whips. I have uh, two works in progress that I've been focusing on, and then I actually have a new start as well. So both whips are uh, cross stitch. I have just been bitten by the cross stitch bug. Uh, like I said in the last one, this is basically going to be floss tube now for the next little bit. Um, crafting does tend to be cyclical and, you know, sometimes things vibe and sometimes things don't and that's okay. And uh, you shouldn't feel guilty. This is a hobby, so don't worry about it. Um, so the first whip I have is my frog skeleton. This pattern is by uh, Raven Stitchcraft on Etsy, um, and this is the boy, or the, the being. I forgot my little board. Let's see if I can. There we go. That doesn't show through so much. Okay, uh, so this is my frog skelly. I am doing the body in um, DMC Variations Purple Pansy, which is and be colors obviously and then the skeleton I'm going to uh, be doing in glow in the dark so first I just outlined everything and now I'm working on filling in so you can see that I've got most of the body filled in I've just been kind of working my way through it creating these cool little blotches of color um, and uh, yeah I'm really enjoying this I put it down for a few days to work on another whip that I'm going to show you in a second but I um, I'm really happy to have this one back kind of as my focus project um, and I'm really seeing some progress on it. Uh, so that's the first whip. 
And the second whip, I'm actually going to show you a picture of it as well because I just moved the frame. So there's actually not much to see at the moment. Um, so this is Kyrie and Sora um, from Needleminder's Lair. And I just moved the frame this morning, so uh, you can't really see anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put here. Uh, this is what it looked like out of the frame. Um, I'm very, very happy with it. And then this is more of a close up of the top of the tree, which is what was in the frame. So I kind of, I like to do, I like to move the frame as little as possible. So I'll do everything that's within the, the section of the frame and then I'll move it. Um, so I finished all these leaves, the tree. Um, I'm so happy with how this one is looking. Like there were a couple points where I was going, oh, this doesn't look great. This is not, this is looking really like blocky and pixely and you can see the, the Ada through the stitches and then you kind of like step back from it and it just, it all blends together and it looks amazing. Um, Needle Miner's Lair has several of these um, pop culture video game sprite uh, scenes and the pattern is just so well done. I, I love it. So those two were my whip go calls for April. Um, I still haven't reached my April goals, but then again, it's only the 7th, so I'm not supposed to have. I have been bitten hard by the cross stitch bug. I want to cast on all of the th cast on start. I want to start all of the things. I want to dive right into doing um, full coverage pieces. I have been seriously tempted by the Thomas Kincaid Disney uh, collection, especially this one. Um, if you don't know, we really like elephants in this house and Dumbo is my wife's favorite thing of all time, um, period. So Dumbo was an obvious choice, I'm, but I am torn, um, mainly because in the, the Thomas Kincaid Dumbo, he's in his clown outfit, which is kind of like the most depressing thing about Dumbo, um, but almost all of the kind of old older artwork of Dumbo is when he's in the clown outfit it's the the most um iconic Dumbo I guess uh the other two that I've been eyeing are the Bambi's first year which is this one or Sleeping Beauty which is this one um both of which again are my wife's favorites I considered doing one of my favorites uh so like Beauty and the Beast but I just don't like the artwork for the Beauty and the Beast as, as much as I like those three. So so that might be happening. Um, there are several other cross-stitch patterns that I have kind of percolating in my brain. I've been doing a lot of designing as well, which you're going to see in the community news section in a second. Um, and I've got an idea for like a, a pop culture video game sampler uh, that is sticking in my brain pretty hard. So that might be a thing that happens. Um, but yeah, right now it's pretty much all cross stitch all the time, um, which brings us to my new start. So my knitting mojo has flown away. Um, it's all cross stitch all the time. No knitting mojo. Um, so I was looking through my whips, doing my project plans for April, and I hadn't really thought about including a knitting whip in those project plans. Um, I have 13 knitting whips on the go at the moment, um, but like none of them were really calling my name and most of them just kind of felt more like a source of guilt than a source of joy right now, uh, which I, I don't want that to be the case for any of my projects. But as I was talking through my April goals with my community, I realized that I don't really want to give up on knitting completely in this time. Um, but since none of my existing whips were really calling to me, I decided to go for something that I really want to have and seeing if a new cast on will kind of bring some of that mojo back. And it, in a way it has. Um, I actually just started it this morning, um, so I haven't gotten very far. Uh, but let me show you what I have so far. This is the beginnings of the beginnings cardigan from the Mr. Rogers Knitting the Neighborhood book. Um, it is on the most unnecessarily long cable. Uh, 
it was on the most unnecessarily long cable because it's the only free cable I had. I think I'm gonna go through my whips and find a shorter cable because this is just it's uncomfortable to work on it with with so much extra cable. Um, it's knit in pieces and this is the start of the back so uh, it's not I don't need to do the full circumference of my large body. Um, so this is the book Mr. Rogers Knitting the Neighborhood. Um, it has faithful reproductions of several of his cardigans. So this is actually the cardigan that I'm doing, the um, the iconic red one with the uh, ribbed details on the sleeves. Hi, Earls. Bye, Earls. Um, I really want one of these cardigans. I really do. Um, so I'm thinking if I focus on that, uh, then that might bring back some of my knitting mojo. Um, and I had a really fun time this morning casting it on and getting a few, uh, a few rows in. I've done about an inch of the back ribbing. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I think it'll just be a really nice little project for when I'm, you know, not feeling, uh, the cross stitch or when I'm kind of my brain's a little bit too tired for cross stitch because the back especially is quite straightforward. It's um, just ribbed for two inches and then stockinette. Uh, so I'll be able to kind of knit that in my sleep. The yarn I'm using is this beautiful heathered gray. It is an acrylic alpaca blend uh, from Ice Yarns. Let's see if I have the label here. Yeah. So it's Master Alpaca Fine from Ice Yarns. Uh, and I actually am holding it double because it's quite a fine yarn and the cardigan calls for a worsted weight. Um, so I'm holding that double and it's creating this really lovely like tweedy but soft fabric. Um, so hopefully next time we have a, uh, a podcast I will have more to show you um, and I will be doing a project vlog for that as well. Um, but yeah, so... That's the whips, um, that's the finishes, that's the whips, that's the projects, uh, that's the early. <laughs> like I said, uh, not too much because I've been working quite monogamously on the two cross stitch projects. Um, I know monogamously on two, but you know what I mean. Um, so I have a lot of progress to show on those, but not a lot on anything else. Um, so I guess it's on to the chronic illness update. So welcome friends to the chronic illness update. Uh, not too much has been happening on that front. Um, it has been a really weird week weather wise. Um, there's been a lot of rain to snow to rain to snow to hot weather to cold weather to more rain. Um, so when the barometric pressure is going all over the place like that, um, of course that leads to migraines. So it's been migraine city over here. Um, been, uh, you know, the, I've had a few of those really bad ones where it's like right behind your eye and you kind of feel like your eyes are blinking at different rates. Yeah, I've had a couple of those. <laughs> so today is warm, but at least it's like a steady warm. Um, so I'm hoping that that's finally passed and I'll be able to be a little bit more functional because of course uh, migraines bring not only the headaches and the pain but also the brain fog so you just kind of sit on the couch and zone out because you can't really do anything else. Um, so yeah, that's about it on the chronic illness front. Otherwise, uh, Toot and I are doing well. Hi, editing DH here. Um, this wasn't entirely accurate. Um, Physically, it's just been the migraines um, and everything has been more or less okay. But uh, emotionally and mentally, it's been getting to me. The disability has been getting to me. Um, I love my job, uh, loved my job. I had the best job in the world. Um, I really loved it. I loved my clients. I loved the people I worked with. Um, and I've been thinking about it a lot, uh, just thinking about my clients and my day to day and just missing it a lot. So it's, it's been tough. Um, so there you go. That's the more accurate chronic illness update.
So on to community news, which is going to be pretty hefty because there's some exciting stuff happening in the world of the Cozy DH. The first big announcement is I had a large shop update just the other day. Uh, if you're not aware, I do have an Etsy store. It's going to be linked below. Um, I sell cross stitch patterns, knitting patterns, crochet patterns, uh, knitting notions, crochet shawls. I'm going to start selling uh, cross stitch notions as well, like scissor fobs and needle minders. I'm just uh, kind of working on stock for that at the moment. And there will be lots more cross stitch patterns coming very shortly. So I am very excited. I posted five new patterns. Um, I tend to do things in batches, so I don't just post one new thing. I'll post five new things. Um, so I have uh, character portraits from Five Nights at Freddy's 2, which is a video game. So those are split into two sets. So you'll get one set that's the toy animatronics and Balloon Boy, and one set that's the withered animatronics and... I hope you guys heard that. And one set that's the withered animatronics and the puppet. So uh, I'm really, really proud of those. Uh, Toot has done a little bit of sample stitching for me on those guys. And uh, I'm, I'm really proud of them because they're not a one-to-one -one, um, translation of pixel art from the game. I, I have created these uh, sprites from scratch. They're nice and small. They're about two inches by two inches. Um, they fit really nicely in a three-inch hoop. hoop uh, so you can do little tiny ornaments or something like that. Uh, or you can combine them into a larger piece. I am planning on trying to uh, do a sprite for every animatronic in the Five Nights at Freddy's games, which if you're familiar with them, that's a um, pretty big undertaking. There's uh, well over a hundred. So, so stay tuned and uh, maybe you can have your own collection of every Freddy that exists. The uh, third pattern that I released is another Five Nights at Freddy's fan pattern, and I already had a few of those on the store as well. It's this really cool looking Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex logo. Um, this version was done in Glow in the Dark Thread by Toot, and uh, it looks really cool. It's in the back of our um, Five Nights at Freddy's display, uh, and it just it turned out so good. It's also huge. It's 11 inches by 11 inches. I am thinking of doing a smaller, maybe six or eight inch size, um, so that you can kind of have a choice. Uh, and it is a bit of a slog being at the size that it is and all one color, but I think it's I think it's pretty worth it. Um, the fourth and fifth pattern are not Five Nights at Freddy's related. Um, first I have this really cute little kitchen witchy one that says uh, crock pots are just electric cauldrons um, and it's just it's a sweet little thing it's about fits in a five inch hoop um, and it would make a really great little addition to your kitchen and the other one which I am working on a test stitch of right now uh, if you guys haven't seen it there's this hilarious viral TikTok. Actually, there's a whole account now and it's these two little frog plushies and they go spinning down a gutter while a rap song plays in the background. It's adorable. Um, and I immediately needed to make a cross stitch pattern of it. So that's what you have here. Um, yeah, I, uh, this is my aesthetic. It's so funny because my design aesthetic is actually quite different from the aesthetic of the stuff that I generally like to stitch because I'm not artistic enough to design the stuff that I like to stitch. At least I'm not artistic enough yet. Um, I believe that that is kind of a skill and I am working on it and, and I am developing it slowly. Um, but yeah, I'm just not quite there yet in terms of uh, being able to design the things that I want to make. Um, but I hope that you do enjoy my designs. Um, go and check out the Etsy store. Uh, I have now 11 cross stitch patterns up as well as knitting and crochet patterns for you as well. The last part of the shop update, I am so excited for this. I'm probably going to do a full video on it, but I use Notion, which is a free task management, project management, everything life management software. I use Notion for everything, including keeping track of my crafting. I have put together and programmed a stitching space. This is a Notion template. It's packed with databases, uh, lists, checklists, um, 
places for you to keep project notes, for you to keep project photos, um, store, catalog, organize your pattern stash, uh, keep track of your fabric. And the, the coolest part of this Notion template, for me at least, is the daily stitching log. And as you keep track of um, your daily stitching log, that information gets pulled to different parts of the template and will actually tell you what days you stitch on something, how long it took you to stitch, how far you are in a project, um, just all those kinds of uh, that kind of information that is just really helpful to know and just really interesting to see. Um, so please do check it out. Even if you are complete newbie at Notion, never used Notion before in your life, um, I'm hoping that this template will be usable for you and not only usable, but really helpful. Um, what I did actually was I wrote a tutorial on how to use the template and then I handed the whole template over to Toot, who does not use Notion. Um, and as she went through it and set up her own stitching space, every time she asked me a question, I answered the question to her. And then I also put the answer into the tutorial. So it's, it's as she, as she said, it's a tutorial. Um, but 100% Toot approved. And yeah, go check it out. Um, I have put it as for an introductory sale. It is going to be 50% off the regular price for uh, just this first little bit while it is up. Um, I hope you will check it out and uh, stay tuned. I may be doing a knitting version of it as well if there is interest in that. Okay. <laughs> Shop update complete drink. Uh, other community news. We have some very exciting live streams this week and actually by the time this comes out you will have already hopefully seen Monday's live stream which for me is tomorrow which is um, the Spirit City Lo-Fi Sessions uh, release day. I am so excited for this. I have been so pumped, so looking forward to it. I cannot believe it's finally here. I am so excited to share it with you guys. Uh, I'm going to uh, put a few images here. Basically, it is technically a video game, but it's more of like a productivity tool, lo-fi environment. It's got timers and task management, and uh, you can create different uh, moods and, and vibes in the room. And um, it's just, I love it. It's a, it's a great little tool. I have over 70 hours in the demo. So I'm very excited to get my hands on the full version of it. Um, we're going to be playing it on stream um, probably for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> uh, but by playing it, I mean it's going to be running while we craft and crochet and cross stitch and knit and all the regular stuff that we do because it isn't it. Like I said, it's technically a video game, but it's not it's not really a an interactive video game. You kind of set it and let it run in the background. Um, so I'm really excited to share that with you guys. Uh, I, 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 I'm just, I'm stoked. <laughs> um, so we're going to do that on Monday and Friday of this week. And then next week, uh, so there's going to be hopefully a video on Wednesday next week. Um, not a cozy cast, so I'm going to talk about it now. But that Friday, the 19th, um, will kick off the 24 Hours of Cross Stitch event, which is a um, weekend long event. Basically, cross stitchers around the globe will try to uh, get in 24 hours of cross stitch over the course of the three days. So it's not like stay up and cross stitch for 24 hours straight, it's try to do 24 hours over the three days. Um, and to celebrate, uh, as well as celebrate my birthday and celebrate one year of streaming and content creation, that Friday the 19th, we are going to have a very special stream. I will announce more details in the Discord um, as it comes up, but I do hope that you can mark off your calendars for the evening of the 19th. Come and join me for a little bit. We're going to be doing some cross stitch. We're going to be listening to the lo-fi lo uh, and we are going to be doing some giveaways. So um, definitely come check out that. Um, and you can find more information about the 24 hours of cross stitch. Uh, I believe it's mostly organized through Instagram using this hashtag, uh, 24HOCS. Um, so yeah, that is April the 19th, Friday evening, 
come join us on the live stream. You can join us on Twitch or you can join us on YouTube. And just quickly before I sign off, um, like I've said before, we have a lovely little community over on Discord. Um, it's a great place to share your crafting successes, your crafting questions, um, talk about video games, talk about your children um, and your animals, and uh, just generally hang out and have a good time. Um, and some of the community members have been creating some awesome, awesome stuff. And I wanted to show that off to you a little bit. Um, so first up, we have uh, Story Stitcher, who is a community member that uh, shows up to a lot of the live streams, is very active in the Discord, and a super speedy knitter. This is their Tolsta tee, um, which is a knitted tee. And uh, they did this in six days. Six days. Six days. And they... They said, you know, like it's it's worsted weight yarn and it's on big needles and it flies and they're also tiny, um, but still six days. Uh, and I just I love this tea. Um, it, the design is just so classic and simple and they executed it really, really well. So this is the Tolsta Tea by Story Stitcher. I am going to pop a link to her Instagram down below. Um, and yeah, I just uh, I think it's really neat. The second piece of work that I wanted to uh, showcase here is this incredible Tunisian crochet Afghan block by community member one. This is Tunisian crochet. Like it, it looks incredible. Um, it's a, a craft that I've never actually picked up myself, but I've been super interested in learning and she has been showing off so much of her incredible work in the discord um you can see that this one it's a, a mosaic color work pattern using um gray sock yarn with uh zabber ball to create that kind of gradient effect and it just it looks so cool um like i i can't get over it and uh yeah, so you guys should definitely check out her work in the Discord and also check out Tunisian Crochet. It's uh, it's a very interesting craft. It's almost a uh, combination of crochet and knitting. I've heard that it's great on the hands. Wanna says that it is good on um, the rheumatoid arthritis, doesn't get too angry at it. So if you do have problems with your hands, that might be a better alternative for you than crochet or knitting, but definitely, definitely check it out. And the final piece of work that I wanted to show off by one of our community members is by our very own Moonfazed. And you can find Moonfazed on Twitch. Um, very active community member who is a relatively new cross stitcher, but has just been doing some amazing work. Um, her stitching is getting so neat and I'm so proud seeing her progress. So this is a piece that she just finished and it's actually a piece designed by me that you can find in the Etsy store. This is um, Neon from the video game Valorant. Uh, it is one of Moon's favorite characters to play. Uh, so if you go check out their Twitch stream, they do play Valorant, which is a first person shooter game, but Moon makes it super cozy, super welcoming. Um, and you'll get to see some really awesome gameplay and meet some really wholesome people. So I love uh, how neat her stitching is on this one. You can see that uh, the way that she's done the bronze has really made it shine. And uh, it's just so cute. And I can't wait to see what Moonfazed makes in the future. Uh, so there's a little bit of what's been going on in our community. And I hope that uh, one day you'll join our little community and maybe next time I'll be showcasing your work up here. So uh, that's it from me. I think I've been talking for a while. This is going to be a little bit of a shorter one. Um, like I said, just because there's not as much crafting going on. Um, but uh, I have so enjoyed sitting down with you guys and just taking a few minutes to talk and chat. Uh, but I think that's about it from me. So right about now, you should be seeing those boxes pop up. If you click on this one, it's really cool. You will subscribe to the channel and you won't miss another video. And if you hit one of these, you will go to another one of my videos and be able to continue sharing the love. Um, in the meantime, I will see you in the comments. I'll see you in the Discord. I'll see you on the live streams. But most importantly, I will see you in my heart. All right. Bye, guys.